Thessalonians chapter 4. Brethren, we will not have you ignorant concerning them that are asleep, that you be not sorrowful, even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them who have slept through Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you in the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them who have slept. The Lord himself shall come down from heaven with commandment and with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead who are in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be taken up together with them in the clouds to meet Christ into the air, and so shall we be always with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort ye one another with these words. The Holy Gospel. Stand. Taken from St. John, chapter 11. At that time, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But now also I know that whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said to her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, although he be dead, shall live. And every one that liveth and believeth in me shall not die forever. Believest thou this? She says to him, Yea, Lord, I have believed that thou art Christ, the Son of the living God, who art come into the world. Thus are the words of the Sacred Church. So we're very happy to receive all of you. Many of you have traveled from very far to come to this week we have Mass the soul of, for some of you, your mother, some of you, your 
aunt, your grandmother, sister. And God has taken her into eternity. God has been pleased to make sure that she died with all the sacraments, well cared for by her son, and they made sure that the priest came and she was able to go to confession, make a general confession of her whole life, and to receive the extreme unction, the last blessing for the hour of death, and all the prayers surrounding her now. So all of you pray for her soul. You notice this Mass, this is a traditional Latin Mass, the Tridentine Mass, said for centuries and centuries since the Apostles, and for all these many, many years. This is a, a Mass, as you see, the vestments are in black, not white. Why? Because the white vestments are used for canonization Masses, for a saint who has died and died in the order of sanctity with many miracles. And the Pope, after studying their life and having miracles, they are canonized. So that's, that's very few. The other mass that is in white is for children who die with baptism, but die before the age of reason. And since they never sinned, they didn't know what a sin was, their masses are in white. For everybody else, all of us poor sinners, who lived after the age of reason with baptism, the Mass is in black. Why black? Because Mother Church and our Lord, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, wants us to pray for their souls. Why? Because it is very true. God is all good. God is all merciful. God is love. But God is also just. And when man spits at God, crucifies Him, scourges our dear Lord by our sins. These sins offend God to such a degree that if they're mortal sins, as those are serious breakings of God's commandments, any mortal sin are serious breakings of God's commandments. So to knowingly, for example, blaspheme God's name, which is commonly used in uh, street language, God's name, the name of Jesus, the name of Mary, the name of God himself. People throw it in the mud like it was dirt. And when one does that knowingly and willingly, and even out of hatred of God, those are, that's a, one of the most serious sins to commit. And also to, to steal the value of something over about $100, the, the, the working man's day wage, to steal something of that value would be a mortal sin, for example. Um, to hate one's parents and to strike one's mother or father out of hatred and anger, that's a mortal sin. So I'm giving you an example of mortal sins. Of course, murder, abortion, contraception, these are mortal sins. Uh, impure thoughts. Our Lord says, you as consented to impure thoughts, to lust after a woman other than his lawful wife, or if he's not married, to lust in a way that as if he were married, these are mortal sins to consent and take pleasure in these are mortal sins. So God is demanding by his commandments. And mortal sin is, is so serious, says St. Alphonsus, that one mortal sin, if one dies in mortal sin, unrepentant, they are sentenced to hell, eternal damnation. And St. Alphonsus says, the great doctor of the church, he says that one mortal sin is so serious that not even all the fires of hell and the eternity of the pains of hell is sufficient to punish the gravity of one mortal sin. And this shows us who God really is. When St. John sees a little glimpse of heaven, what does he see? He sees all the armies of angels. There's billions and billions of angels, far more than the human race, people. And he sees the ancients with crowns of gold and the apostles. And he sees all the prophets before God. And all these angels and saints fall before God, chanting, Santus, Santus, Santus. 
and all the greatest adoration, majesty, the glory of God. And when we offend God, it's, it's serious business. And a venial sin would be, as the Catechism teaches us, as Scripture teaches us, a venial sin is a slight offense against God. So a mortal sin brings death to the soul, separates the soul from God, the soul is dead, and unless that soul repents, will be sentenced to eternal damnation. The soul who dies in the state of grace, with the perfect love of God, and who has <clears throat> done enough reparation in this life for their sins, may, may go directly to heaven. So St. Benedict, he saw his own sister, St. Scholastica, he saw her soul ascend into heaven right after death as a dove. And also St. Mark the Tour, when he died, he founded numerous monasteries. The big one was Marmoutier in France, and has given to God and to the church many, many saints, holy monks who have lived there. And when he died, St. Martin of Tours, his soul was seen to ascend to heaven on a, on a massive, elaborate staircase carried up by angels and escorted by angels. So those who die in such a, a love of God and such a perfect state of virtue, they go straight to heaven. But again, the mass of mankind, if they don't go to hell and don't go directly to heaven, most men have to go through purgatory. Now, since God is so perfect, all holy, nothing, says the Holy Ghost, nothing impure, nothing undefiled can come before the throne of God. So how many die completely pure and undefiled? Most souls die, they're sorry for their sins, especially Catholics who have had the chance to go to confession, receive the sacraments, and they die with, with the state of grace. But they still have stains on their soul of venial sin, or stains on their soul um, of, of mortal sin that has been forgiven, but, but there's punishment due to the sin. Because remember, with every sin, there's a stain that is put on the soul. Mortal sin makes it completely black and dead. Venial sin puts stains on it. And it's like a slight offense against God. And a soul who dies in venial sin with punishment due to past mortal sins that are forgiven, but they don't die with the perfect love of God, they still must be purified still must be purged. And this is why St. Paul will say, they sh he says, they shall be saved, yet so as by fire. And so we know from the lives, of, from the words of scripture, from the lives of many saints, that souls in purgatory do suffer very much. They suffer very much. And some of them burn. But they're not frantically screaming in pain. They, they are very much at peace to sit up St. Francis to sail. They are actually happy because they're going to heaven. And they're free from the danger of, of being sentenced to eternal damnation in hell. So they know they're going home. But they cannot help themselves. And this is where God expects those of us on earth. This is one of the great works of mercy is to pray for the living and the dead especially the dead who are in purgatory. And when Shirley, you know her, she has lived a long life. Maybe in God's eyes she was perfect and went straight to heaven. God knows. I hope for her that's the case. But in the majority of cases, that most souls have to pass through purgatory. Even some saints have had to pass through purgatory. So Saint Severus, he revealed that he had to spend six months in purgatory because as a bishop, he was sometimes careless pray, doing his prayers. Or a priest, negligent at mass, had to spend 40, 40 years in purgatory for being careless and saying the mass too neglectfully. And then many nuns have had to pass to purgatory because of uh, one nun had to pass to purgatory. She was a holy nun, but she, she died not completely resigned to God's will. She had to spend a few weeks in purgatory. 
These are realities. And you can go to Rome, you can see in Rome the Purgatory Museum. The modernists, of course, the liberal Catholic minds don't like Purgatory because they want to think like Protestants and deny it. But whether you are, you are denied Purgatory, it doesn't change the reality. Purgatory exists, and it's a great mercy of God. It's such a mercy of God, because if Purgatory did not exist, very few would get to heaven, because nothing impure and undefiled is worthy to come before God. So God in his goodness and mercy created Purgatory, because those souls that go there, however long they stay, some are there to the end of the world. But when they're released, they go home, and they're happy. And that's why this work of mercy, pray for the soul of Shirley, pray for her soul. And then since the souls of purgatory can't help themselves, sometimes God permits that these souls come back on earth and ask for prayers. Hence, the well-known ghost stories. In the houses out east, over in the east already here, many old homes, people hear footsteps, they hear um, dishes being moved at night, and what other things? Just quiet, innocent things. I know one man, he told he asked his house to be blessed because he would put down his tools, and in the morning he'd find them all neatly placed on the other side of the table. And this went on for weeks. And he'd, he came to the priest and he said, what's going on here? Is there a devil? Is this a soul? What's... So St. Paul says, test the spirits. And usually if it's the devil, it's usually violent and attacks the people. And it's very dark. But, but many times it's souls of purgatory who are God allows to come back and ask for prayers. And that's why, for example, we all, we're all familiar with the stories of Gettysburg. There was one one senator, I guess, visiting Gettysburg on a rainy day. He was traveling, going by uh, all the sites to see in, where the battles were on the northern side. And as they were driving down by the southern side, near Seminary Ridge, he saw out on the field where the southerners engaged in battle near Pickett's Charge, he noticed that there was a whole platoon of soldiers marching in the rain. And they were marching dressed in the Civil War attire, with the Civil War weapons, beards, and they looked like rough, you know, the rough Alabama boys and the rough Kentucky boys. And he was very impressed, and he came to the visitor center, and he said, you know, I'm very impressed with what kind of group do you have that will practice at this time of the year and in the pouring rain. And the man at the visitor center called the manager and they said, well, this is we never have this happen. They, they only practice in the summer when they do reenactments. So he, they, they said, well, I saw this whole platoon out there practice. And they said, it's impossible. They're, just, they're not scheduled and they're not allowed to be on the field without permission doing something like this, without a permit. So the, the senator said, well, I'll show you. And they went back out and there was nothing. Was green grass, no footprints in the field, nothing. And many things like this have happened. One man I know, uh, he brought a recorder to Gettysburg, walked on the field, his, well, had his recorder just recording as he walked through Devil's Den, where many Southerners were hit. And when he got home, he just played it to see if it's going on. And he heard, he heard a voice of a soldier in agony saying, please pray for me, please pray for me, that's all we need. So these are facts, that souls are in purgatory, many of them for a long time. What was Shirley's judgment? God, God only knows. If God doesn't reveal it to us, maybe he reveal it to some of the family members. This also will happen sometimes. If someone dies, they pray for them, they continue to have masses said for them. They offer their rosaries. They will fast for them. And then after a certain period of time, a week or two or several years or even 10 years, that soul will let them know that they're going home to heaven. 
God does permit this sometimes, and sometimes even to appear to them. So, for example, <clears throat> the mother of a certain Joseph in France, I forget his last name, his mother died, and he thought, well, she went to Mass every day, she was a good lady, she prayed a lot, so... Yeah, he went to the Mass, and he prayed a few prayers for her, but he thought, by now, she must be in heaven. Two weeks later, she appeared to him. She put her hand on his sleeve and said, Son, why did you forget me? I'm in purgatory, and I need your prayers. She touched his sleeve, which was a big, thick sleeve like, like this. Just touched it for a second and vanished. That sleeve is hanging in Rome at the Purgatory Museum because at that touch, her hand burnt right through the cloth, thick cloth. So that tells you, ladies, that the iron, <clears throat> you know, even if you have the high iron that's full high, it will not burn a hole instantly. And that tells you they're burning at a very hot temperature. And these souls do need prayers. And sin is very serious. God is all pure, God is all good, God is all, but also just. So when we deal with these realities of sin, of who God really is, how serious sin really is, then we, when we hear these stories of the saints and the scriptures, then we begin to realize how serious these things really are. And how in the modern world, with our uh, godless age and our godless laws and our godless education and our, our age of apostasy that has spit on God and, and said to God in our modern governments, raising their fists to God, we will not have you, Christ the King, reign over us. We don't want your laws over us. We don't want your Ten Commandments over us. We don't want your forbidding us to, to do what we want and sin as much as we want. So all these abortions, all these euthanasias, all these, all these crimes, the false education in the schools, all these uh, legalization of divorce, which offends God very much. In a marriage, it's death to you till you part. Death, it's, excuse me, it's marriage till death to you part. And uh, these laws that cry to heaven for vengeance, especially abortion, especially these crimes of the blood of children that cry to heaven for vengeance. All these sins are, are no joke. That's why when we commit sin, what is a sin? It's a violation. It's going against the law of God by any thought, word, action, or omission. And the, the Holy Ghost says in Scripture, the just man falls seven times a day. That's why we poor sinners that we are, even when, when souls are striving to become saints, as the seminarians and as the monks and holy nuns, of which there are fewer and fewer now because of the revolution within the church. Still, even the, the best souls striving for sanctity still fall seven times a day. And our Lord says to us, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Yet we know that's not possible. How can we, man, just puny dust and ashes, be as perfect as God? And our Lord knows this. But what he means is we must continually strive to keep God's commandments, strive to be saved, strive to get to heaven, strive to grow in the love of God. And so one of the great mercies, works of mercies, that you, the family of Shirley, and uh, all those who are here, is to pray for her soul. Pray for her soul. Pray the rosary. And if you haven't been to confession in, in a long time, it's time to get to confession. Prepare your own soul for death so that death does not take us by surprise. And Mother Church will pray in the litany of the saints from a sudden and unprovided death, O Lord, deliver me. Because a sudden and unprovided death is not an, always a good thing. Because if someone's caught in mortal sin, they, in, in unrepentant sin, they have no chance to go to heaven. So we want to prepare. When we see these burials, 
And as a priest, you see many of them. You give extreme unction to many who are dying. You do many burials. And it's always a reminder, someday I'm going to be in that box. This goes for all of us. Someday we're going to be in this box. We'll be lucky if we have a mass for us. And we're going to be buried six foot under. And let the atheists mock God with their blasphemies against his holy truth. Let the atheists raise their mockeries. But God is not mocked. An atheist will say, well, we're, we're just evolved from animals. We just evolved after billions and billions of years. All these lies of evolution that shoved down the throats of the children in our public schools and universities. All lies. All lies. Even honest science shows the earth is quite young. Not, not much more than 6,000 years old. It's quite young. And even modern genetics testing shows that we all come from one father and one mother, Adam and Eve. We don't come from some apes hanging off trees. So the atheists will say, yeah, when I die, I just, I'll just uh, shoot up daisies and, and we turn into nothingness. That is so false. So false. God made us with an immortal soul. All you boys, you're going to live forever. All of you will live forever. Five billion years from now, and surely they're going to, we are all going to live forever because our soul is immortal. And that's why what matters is to save the soul because the soul is going to last forever, either in heaven, in the glory of paradise, with the vision of the Blessed Trinity, the joy of all the saints, or in hell, in the damnation of fire and this is not fiction. This is not Father HYRZ's opinion. He's in the words of God himself, of Christ himself. God who became man showed us his great love by dying on the cross to save us, rescue us by his death, to rescue us from hell. But he doesn't move us by fear so much. He doesn't want us to be slaves, battery-operated robots. <laughs> keep his commandments like battery operated robots. He didn't make us battery operated. He gave us a free will. So any of us can turn from God. Any of us can break his commandments knowingly and willingly. But that's why our Lord, the only force he has used on mankind is himself handcuffed by nails to the cross. His feet unable to move by being nailed to the cross. And his whole body ripped open by scourges and the crowning of thorns, pouring out all his blood and the last drops of his blood from his most pure and, and the loving heart of the infinite God, the sacred heart of Jesus, pierced open on the cross and pouring out for us the last drop of blood. Truly, as he said, no man has greater love for his friend than to lay down his life. Christ has done that, and he's done it because none of us were born friends of God, not any of us, except the Virgin Mary. She's the only one conceived without original sin. All the rest of us poor humans were born with the stain of original sin. That means we were born enemies of God. We were born wrapped with our chain, the chains of the devil on our soul in the black state of sin until the day we were baptized. Then the blood of Christ, that blood from the cross, washes the soul, gives the life of grace, the blessed trinity dwelling in the soul. These are the realities of the great holy faith that God has revealed. So, how precious is our soul. And learn from the devil, if you can't learn anything else, let's learn from the devil how hard he works to damn our souls. How hard he works to get us to commit mortal sin, and even worse, to live in the state of mortal sin. So that people get comfortable drinking sin like they drink water and coke. And once death comes upon them, will they have time of repentance? Will they have time? Many people, says the scripture and says the saint, will beg for one more hour, just one more week, one more ten minutes so I can make an act of contrition. 
And as we live behind, as the tree leans, says the Holy Ghost, so it falls. So that's why we must not put off our conversion. Because we know not the day nor the hour of our death. Surely, God bless her. She had the grace of a good prepared death. She really did. She had the rosary in her hand, and I'm sure she's in this coffin with the rosary in her hand. And she'll be buried here on the grounds of the seminary. And uh, during every day, the seminarians and priests walk by this cemetery, and we'll be praying for all these souls and Shirley's. So do pray for her, and remember, you're going to see Shirley again someday. She's not going to be old. At the resurrection of the dead on the last day, when the trumpets blow, and all the bodies in the cemeteries and all the ashes scattered all over wherever. The angels, their, one of their jobs will be to gather all the bones and the ashes. And God, through the DNA of each of those cells that are in those ashes, will miraculously reclothe the bones, reclothe the, those cells with bones and flesh. And this is called the resurrection of the dead. It's going to happen, and we're all going to be there. St. Thomas Aquinas says, all will rise at about the perfect age, which is about the age of 30. So when you see Shirley again, she's going to be young and beautiful. And all, all children who died young, they're going to be age 30. Those who died in their 90s or 100s will also rise at age 30. And with a perfect body, she'll be much the same, with the same personality and characters, but, but it'll be, if her, the grace of God will shine through her. And she'll be clothed with the beauty that God will give to his friends. And that's, that's why the resurrection of the dead, which will happen, is a reality. And we're all going to be there. And as we live, so we die. And we want to pray that we die well. This is one of the teachings of the Great Council of Trent that none of us can know if we're going to die in the state of grace. That's why every day God doesn't show us. You know, he wants us to keep praying every day for the grace to persevere in the state of grace in the Holy Catholic faith and ready to die. So the, the immortal soul of Shirley has already passed to her judgment. At the moment of death comes the judgment, the, the particular judgment already been judged. If she's in purgatory, which in my opinion, which is not worth much, but it's God alone knows, but in my opinion it's very likely she could be in purgatory. In which case, pray for her soul. Pray for her soul. St. John Vianney, when he said Mass, for a requiem Mass, St. John Vianney lived in the 1700s. He died in the early 1800s. He was a great priest. The devil told him, if there were three priests like you, my kingdom on earth would be destroyed. And St. John Vianney was persecuted by the devil, put his bed on fire, torment him. St. John Vianney uh, was told he, he, could read, he could read the sinner's souls in confession. So people would come to confession, they would tell their sins, and he would say, well, what about the sin you committed 15 years ago at such and such a place? And they were, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> and then he would real, help them make their confessions. He could read their hearts. And the great St. John Vianney saw numerous times the Blessed Virgin Mary. Sometimes at Mass, he would elevate right off the ground. It sounds like fiction, but people saw this, and it's recorded in history. It happened with many saints, actually. And his body lies in corrupt. He never rotted. And that's, there's over hundreds of saints that never rotted. As God shows his blessings and approval on the examples of the saints. So one of the things St. John Vianney would do is at Mass, see at the Mass what takes place when you hear the bells ring <coughs> and the priest elevates the sacred host and the precious blood of our Lord, what's happening on the altar is called the sacrifice of the Mass. What happens is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ the King on the cross that happened on Good Friday at 3 p.m. when he died, from 12 to 3, he hung on the cross. 
That great prayer of Christ on the cross at every single valid mass re is reenacted. It takes place in, uh, on the altar and made present on the altar. And this is the power of the Catholic mass. And so when St. John Vianney would elevate the heart of Jesus in the host, he would say to our Lord, Lord, I offer the heart of your son <coughs> in exchange for the release of such and such a soul from purgatory. And often he, God would show him, as he elevated the host, God would show him the soul being released from purgatory, as God took the deal. God took the deal. So <coughs> I'll, I'll do that with her soul. But I'm far from a saint like St. John Vianney. We do pray for all of us, pray for our seminarians. And all of you, don't forget, fly home, when you get back to regular life in a month or so, <coughs> and the pain of the morning is over, don't forget Shirley. Pray for her soul. And maybe she'll let you know somehow. We pray for her soul. So after this Mass, we'll continue with the final blessings, and then we'll process to the graveyard, where she will be lowered, and uh, the men and boys will shovel the dirt as a work of mercy. It's a work of mercy to bury the dead. So any of you men, and of course you boys, <coughs> want to step forward and shovel the dirt, remember how God blesses that work of burying the dead with great uh, compassion and uh, respect for her body and her soul. So let's ask the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Michael and all the saints. Let me just close with these great prayers one of these prayers for the for when a soul is dying. This is one of the prayers that is said. Depart, O Christian soul, out of this sinful world. In the name of God the Father Almighty, who created you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who suffered and died for you. In the name of the Holy Ghost, who sanctified you. In the name of the glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, in the name of blessed Joseph, the illustrious spouse of the same Virgin, in the name of the angels and archangels, in the name of the thrones and dominations, in the name of the principalities and powers, in the name of the cherubim and seraphim, in the name of the patriarchs and prophets, in the name of the holy apostles and evangelists, in the name of the holy martyrs and confessors, in the name of the holy monks and hermits, in the name of the holy virgins and of all the saints of God, may your dwelling place this day be in heaven, the home of peace to the same Christ our Lord. We ask this for the soul of Shirley. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. And may the souls and all the souls of the faith departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son,
Tahmine bağlı sevgili Mesut Mutfi'ye sıkıntıdır. Sen tahmine bağlı olduğunu sen ağabeydin Tahmine bağlı sevgili Mesut Mutfi'ye sıkıntıdır. Sen tahmine bağlı olduğunu sen ağabeydin o. I remind you that only those who are Catholic, who are living in the state of grace, and according to the laws of the Church on marriage, may come forward to receive the very body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ himself.
surely ask our Lord to free her soul from eternal torments and when Christ comes on the day of judgment and all the heavens shall be shaken and the whole earth purged by fire and Christ the King comes to judge the entire human race all men from Adam and Eve to the very last man will be gathered before the throne of Jesus Christ the King. Notice, not before the throne of Allah, because he's a false god, not before the throne of Luther, not before the throne of Buddha, not before the throne of any false god, but only the true God, Jesus Christ the King, will judge the human race. As he said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So we will have to render an account for every thought every word, every action of our life. So every minute does count. Every hour counts in this time on earth. So let's pour forth our prayers with the Mother Church's chants, these ancient chants written by saints and monks who lived holy lives and are now in the happiness of heaven. Let's pour forth our prayers for the dear soul of Shirley that if she is in purgatory, she may be released soon and come to that happy vision of the most blessed Trinity. Lord, in trust, we need to consider what you are doing. We are not as happy to use to be coming to Rome on this eternity. We are not as happy to be coming to this eternity. Lord, we are not as happy to be coming to this eternity. Lord, we are not as happy to be coming to this eternity. We are not as happy to be coming to this eternity. Grazie a tutti, il Superente, mi ha dato i padri di Ricci, non si è un ispito, non vive nel Sinistro, e si ha due santi trinitati, e vive su regno, in secolo a secolo. Liberami, Domino, te,
Oh, no. 
lead thee into paradise, and the martyrs come to receive you and lead you into the heavenly city of the new Jerusalem. May the chorus of the angels receive thee, and with Lazarus find eternal rest. I am the resurrection and the life, who believes in me, even if he be dead, shall live, and all who Believe in me, shall live and shall not die forever. Echo sum resurrectio et vita. Qui credit in me, et siam simultus erinit vita. Resurrection. 
Surely will be interred to the earth, and the earth will hold her until the day of the of the day of judgment, the last day, when all the dead will rise, and the angels will gather, and Christ will come on the throne. Daniel says, the prophet, fire will come before his throne. And Christ the King will judge the entire human race. It'll be the sunset of the human race. It'll be the end of all history, the end of all time. And then all those who go to heaven shall be gathered to the right hand of our Lord with the sheep, with all the angels escorted with the Virgin Mary and all the saints into the happiness of heaven. And the damned, Christ will turn to them and say, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. For I was hungry, you never fed me. I was thirsty, you didn't give me a drink. I was naked, you never clothed me. I was in prison, you never visited me. And so forth. All the works of mercy. And to pray for the living and the dead is a work of mercy. And to bury the dead, which we will soon do, is a great work of mercy. So let's um, proceed now to the actual burial. And with, with her, we'll send our prayers and we'll pray the rosary during the the actual burial. So we need, uh, we need eight men to step forward. Beyond the rest of the intendant, 
in vocem deprecationis mei, si iniquitates observare veris veris Domine, Domine qui sostineni, qui abote propitiatione, e propter legem tuam sustinuite Domine, Sustinuit anima mea in verbo eiu, spera vida anima mea in domino. A custodia matutina usque anote, spera di Israel in domino. Qui ab domino misericordia,
Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Glory to God, Father, and Filio, and Spiritu Vis Santo, Sicura Rati Principio, and Unghel Sante, and in Secula, Seculorum, Amen. O Lord Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Second travel mystery, the scourging of our blessed Savior, Christopher. We offer the most precious blood of our Lord, his most sacred face, and his most sacred heart. That he thought of surely and died for her might open to her the gates of heaven, that she might join the angels and the saints in the happiness of heaven forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Gloria, Patria, Filio, 
et spiritui sancto, sicura rot in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who must be in mercy. The eternal rest, grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her, and let her soul and all the souls of the faithful depart into the mercy of God, rest in peace. So remember Tobias of the Old Testament, how he buried the dead, and how God blessed him so abundantly for such a work of mercy. So let's continue to pray for the dear Shirley. All of you are welcome to come to a, with some refreshments downstairs if you like. And <coughs> anytime during the year, anytime you may come and the family or friends, come and feel free to come and visit and uh, visit the tomb of Shirley. I'll give everybody a blessing. This concludes the ceremony for the rapier and, and the burial. Benedicto de Omnipotente, Pasis, Cecilia, Suti, Sandi, Vishena, Supervost, Demania, Semper, Amen. Okay, God bless you all.